I'm not going to share my screen because we would just be looking at the at the uh, handbook. I will talk around a couple of things. So make sure everybody has the. Great. OK. All right. I see the, the uh, numbers picking up. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I will uh, I think we're on recording. Great. OK. So I'm following along our agenda. We've added to the handbook a management development series section in the leadership portion of the handbook. And I'm following on along Monday, June 26th. Abby and I will be working together to create, a, a, hopefully, a very valuable series for all of our managers, um, new as well as managers who have lots of experience. So we're, we're going to run the gamut and, and really include everyone in the conversation. It's our job to facilitate a, uh, hopefully, a quite a valuable discussion um, and, and then uh, put together learning opportunities for you. But it's also... Uh, our expectation that all managers will take accountability for um, creating meetings and attending meetings and um, completing the assignments that we're putting out because these are all things that will work together with you on down the road. This not, not just for uh, you know a one-time event. The um, a few housekeeping rules. Um, we will record all of our sessions in case that people can't attend. They can join and we'll attach the uh, link to the recordings um, in the agenda. <clears throat> so we'll be updating the agenda, excuse me, <clears throat> as we go along. Um, and I'll ask because of that that we don't share any confidential information. If you have a particular example that you want to go over for anything that we've covered, please contact Abby or myself and we can certainly have those discussions outside of this forum. We're going to be creating relationship opportunities for management. There are at least three ways that we're going to start off with. We're going to create management, or we are actually have already finished creating management cohorts. Right now, they're called groups A, B, and C. They need better names than that. I will share those with you. Uh, let me share the link. And I will put that in chat. The workbook has already been shared with you. So you can go ahead and jump in that workbook if you can. If not, you can jump in it later and I will be sending an email to follow up um, with everyone so that everyone's well aware of what your management cohort is and what your mentor and mentee pairs are. Well, what does this mean? We've divided you, uh, based on the profile that you filled out for us, we divided you into three management cohorts. Right now, called Group A, B, and C. And your first assignment for homework will be, as a cohort, get together and come up with a creative name for your cohort. I'll follow up with that um, in that email to make sure everybody is aware that that's homework due before the next time we get together. So hopefully some natural leadership will come out. You will um, have lots of creative ideas and you'll come back with a professional, appropriate, exciting, um, and engaging leadership cohort name. You've been assigned uh, to a cohort based on your years of management experience. So those uh, in the profile with um, the lowest amount of experience in management have been assigned to, to group A. Group B was the mid group and group C, and you can see here by the color code, we have a lot of group Cs, so we have a lot of managers with a good deal of management experience, which is awesome because they can help us with this curriculum. You've also been assigned mentor and mentee pair relationships based on those years of experience and a few other things that Abby and I talked about along the way. So this uh, workbook will give you those assignments and your second homework assignment is to connect with your mentor and or mentee. Some of you, as you can see, have two assignments. If you were kind of a mid-level uh, manager, uh, as far as experience goes, then we assigned you both as a mentor and a mentee. 
if that gets too busy for you, let me know. And um, as we, we're, we're missing a couple of people, so we still have a couple of other um, mentor opportunities that we can assign, but there was some overlap, so I, I gave some of you double duty um, in, your, in your roles. Again, in that mentor-mentee relationship, I ask that you get together over the next couple of weeks, introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about your management experience, uh, talk a little bit about the, um, the profile and, and what you bring to the table and what ideas you might have and what challenges you have and your, um, and your mentor or mentee, share that back and forth and um, hopefully you'll come up with some great ideas for us as we go forward. I so, expect that those to interrupt you. Some, some of us joined in later because we had a meeting that overrun and we don't have the link available. Could you oh, share it? Sorry. Okay. Uh, no problem. That is in the, it's in the uh, chat. Yo, it is the, it's called manager team assignments. Thanks. So uh, sure. Richard and Sarah shared it. Yep. So you, in the chat, you have two links just to, to recap quickly. You have the leadership page in the handbook and now I've added this management uh, team assignments. Your cohort assignment, your mentor, and your mentee assignments are in here. They are creative, but they are within the uh, uh, assignments of the experience levels that you have, so you can't change them. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Any questions on the management cohorts? Your homework for creating a, um, an exciting, engaging um, energetic name for your management cohort and the homework to meet up with your mentor and or mentee uh, partner over the next couple of weeks. Joan, do you mind if I write the homework in a Google Doc that I share with everybody? I, on the one hand, it would be helpful to be able to take notes, but on the other hand, I might be duplicating what's already in the handbook and in the spreadsheet. I, um, I did not add that piece. I will add that right after the meeting, Ernst, to the agenda in the handbook. So that, that was my intention. I just didn't get that in there and I apologize. The rest of the homework is here. Um, I will add it directly underneath. So you can either take it in a, a Google Sheet, but it's going to be here as soon as we, you know, by the end of my day, it will be added to the, uh, to the handbook. My intention is that the handbook will have all of our assignments and all of our, our um, talking points. Okay. All right. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll also add now, let me, let me note here that I've only shared the manager or uh, yeah, the manager team assignment workbook um, to specifically the managers. The workbooks that we're going to share with you are not going to be shared with everyone in GitLab with a link because there will be um, some specific information. This one, not so much, but I'm keeping it consistent across the board. So I would like to put a link in the handbook to this, but not everyone will then be able to get to it, just the managers, just you as managers. I don't know if that'll create confusion. You can give me feedback if you want on that. If it's better just to share these, you know, the, these spreadsheets outside of the handbook, I'm okay with that too. I was just trying to make it accessible so that everybody would have it. But again, people on the outside, and individual contributors won't be able to click on these and, and get to them. Okay, uh, let's see. Coffee breaks. Um, asking again, this, the idea of these, this series is to provide you with as much valuable information as we can in the limited time that we have, the hour that we have together, once a week, sometimes every other week, depending on the schedule over the summer. Um, but I need, what we'll need then is we'll give you information and we'd really like for individual groups to, to pick up if, if a management cohort wants to get together, that's fine. If mentor-mentee pair wants to get together, that's great. And then if you want to go outside of your cohort, now you have a list of people who are in the different um, stages, uh, into the different experience levels. You can reach out to someone else and ask them. Uh, some of the assignments that we'll be giving um, will have be open for you to see what other managers are inputting. You can always reach out to another manager who has a similar challenge that you do or that doesn't seem to have that challenge and you want some advice. So coffee breaks are encouraged as part of this process. So our next agenda item, performance reviews. We will be 
um, switching up the performance review process for 2017, for the performance year 2017, we're going to go with a semi-annual review process. We are going to uh, build out and um, push out to you in the month of July, a review for the first half of 2017. And then in January, you'll complete, you as well as the individual will complete a performance review for the second half of 2017. I'm using that cadence because I'm trying not to overwhelm everyone with administrative responsibilities, but as you all well know, those of you who've done annual reviews before, we tend, if we do an annual review, to forget what happened in the first half of the year, whether it was really great or, or whether it was really bad. Probably more likely that you'll remember something that happened that wasn't so great in the second half and overlook something that was, that would offset it or that was great in the first half. So I want to be sure that we're looking at a, a lesser amount of time, they'll have the same set of questions for both, and then we'll have an overall summary at the very end. So you'll have the same amount of effort in both reviews, and then we'll have a very small summary um, that will either be attached to the second half or will be an individual of its own. I'm working with Lattice. We will continue to work with Lattice for performance management, performance reviews, and I'm working with, with Lattice right now to build this out so that we can get it rolled out at the very beginning of July. You'll have about the first three weeks in July to get those done for the first half of the year. And then we'll store them away, but you will have them at your fingertips for reviewing uh, for the second half of the year as well. So again, they'll be there for you to, uh, to look over the history before you add the second half. We'll also uh, be adding 360 feedback Many people gave that as a, uh, had a question, why weren't we doing 360 when we did the 2016 reviews? And there was a couple of reasons we didn't. We didn't have uh, nearly um, the number of people in the organization participate because of their um, eligibility for the 2016 review. So I held off on having the, the 360 in addition to the fact that we pushed it out really quickly so we could get the merit process um, managed and out of the way. And, and this way, uh, we'll introduce it. Everyone will have plenty of time. Um, I don't have all the, the uh, options selected on this yet, or I'll, I don't have it built out thoroughly yet. So I'll be rolling this out. And, and uh, on our next meeting, the week of July 10th, you'll either have it already um, or it will be um, just coming out. So we'll talk about it again then if anybody has any questions along the way. The ratings that we um, create in first half and second half and the overall ratings will be part of the 2018 merit process which will happen in the first quarter of 2018. My, I anticipate the schedule looking like you'll complete the second half performance review in January and the overall rating with that along with that and then in February we'll run through the merit review process uh, for uh, an effective date at the end of the quarter. Any questions on the performance review uh, overview? Okay, let's talk about homework. I've already given you two assignments. I might as well give you a few more. Um, we have a team development discussion coming up on July 10th. I skipped the, the week of July 4th for those managers who would not be available that week. I was having trouble finding availability, so just went ahead and, and skipped to July 10th. I haven't sent that, in, that uh, invite out yet. I wanna talk about that a little bit as well to make sure that um, I'm being considerate of everyone because we have a, a large, rather large group. There are 32 at this point managers and you're spread across the globe and, and building out global invites it can become difficult. So I wanna talk about that um, before we close off the call. But the homework assignment, we are going to step into a uh, team development model. It's a, a rather aged model, or the, the beginning of the model was, was in 1965, actually. I've given you some, um, some resources that you can look over here. The model is, and I'm sure that most of you have heard the terms, forming, storming, norming, and performing. There are additional um, stages that were added later. We'll talk about those in our July 10 meeting, but we're gonna focus on these first four so that we can um, decide where our teams are 
and how we can get everyone to the performing stage as quickly as we can, but understand that as we add new team members, we may slide back and we want to help with that process. Abby and I will use the, the um, exercise to have ongoing dialogue as we meet with our managers. Abby and I meet with most managers. Hopefully you're all on a schedule of at least a bi-weekly meeting with us. And this is one of the many things that uh, will be uh, an ongoing dialogue for us to continue to help you evolve your teams. So team development is our first theme. Um, we're going to provide a workbook to you right after this meeting. I think, let's see if I can give you a peek at that. I think Abby has it mostly done. And Abby, I added everybody in for access. So I put that in the chat. And if you want to jump in there, I believe you all have access now. Let's take a quick look at it and then you can ask any questions that you might have before we uh, adjourn for homework. I'll let everybody take a second to go in if you want. There are a number of infographics that you can pull and Abby found a really, uh, what I consider to be one of the best ones um, to explain each of the four stages. She's also built in a really neat progress graph for us. So what we're gonna ask you to do is we're going to ask you to fill in the blanks for your tab. Please don't work in, I'm, I've actually opened mine to Michael's tab. Pay attention at the bottom. The tabs are labeled with your last name, um, comma first name. Find your tab. After a bit of research, after logging into Grovo and taking the uh, manager 161, develop your team um, Grovo course, which is a, a manager course that's about 30 minutes long. And after taking a look at these resources that I have here for you, Bruce Tuckman's Stages of, of Team Devel Development, which is in Wikipedia, that was a really good explanation, as well as another infographic that we liked, that's the tasks for each stage. After you've taken a look at those, define your current stage for your team. And we were adding a second, uh, a second request. Not just a stage can be really um, long. It can be um, something you skip through really quickly. It can be something that you say, okay, we're past that. But if you're in a stage like storming, sometimes it can take a while to get past that. Norming is one of the longest stages. So what we've put in here is a progress bar. And we wanna know whether you think you're at the beginning, the middle, or if you're ready to advance and move out of that current stage that you're in. So from one to three, you'll list your progress here. And then if you would answer the four questions that we have under action plan. Once you define your stage and, and the progress, we'd like to know what is holding you back from moving forward. What do you think is holding your team back? What steps should you take to move your team forward? And if you're not sure, then you can put, here's what I think, but I'm really not sure. I'd like to know if our environment encourages healthy team development and if you have suggestions, so if you think not, then um, make suggestions as to what we can do to encourage team development more than we do today or what teams individually can do to encourage development. That's the homework assignment for our, our first um, piece of curriculum which is on team development. Again, hey Joe, the, hey Joe, this is Hayden. Um, Hayden. When, you, when we're talking about teams, we're we talking about our, our own teams that we manage or we're we talking about cohort teams? Ah, great question. Excellent. Thank you. Your own team. So okay. you're the team of people that you manage. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. That was excellent. I know I've probably confused you with being on too many teams now. You have all these team assignments. Um, as I said, that once you complete this exercise, we're going to create a, a bit of a summary to talk about on July 10, and you will all have access to each of the tabs, so you can, as I said, find people that have a similar um, 
progress rate as you do, or you can take a look and, and find someone who's having a challenge and help them through that challenge with things that you've done that have been successful. That's the idea is to put, put people together that can help each other move forward. So that is the essentially the time that I wanted to, to or the curriculum that we had prepared for today because there are things that um, we want you to do and, and we want you to get together as your, your cohorts. But I also wanted to leave plenty of time in this particular meeting uh, for questions, thoughts, and ideas. If you've had a chance, um, if you've been a part of another manager cohort in the past, if you've been a part of a, of a manager or a management development program, leadership development program, please feel free to give us feedback and thoughts and ideas. You just got the uh, handbook update, so you might want to take a look at what we have planned. As you can see, it's not all well flushed out like the next couple of weeks. We, we wanted to get the first couple out of the way to see how it went, and then we can roll from there. Now let me open the floor and see if anybody has any conversation um, that will be helpful to us. Hey, Joan, thanks for that. I've got a general question. Um, I assume it's relevant to other people in my group as well, because most of the people in my group uh, manage development teams. Um, I think of a lot of the development teams as, you know, not really separate teams that work together, but as groups of people who work with another team a lot of the time. Um, so, for instance, uh, someone from my team might work with someone from Jacob's team or someone from Dower's team might work with someone from Tim's team. Um, and they'll often do that more closely than the people who are reporting to the same manager as them. Uh, that's just the way we uh, structure our work. So I was just wondering how we sort of define those stages in terms of a team that doesn't necessarily work alongside each other as much as um, other teams. That's an excellent question, Sean, and maybe, um, maybe not unique to GitLab and certainly not unique to engineering right, when you work across teams. Um, my suggestion is I, I'm, I'm looking for us to start within your team and to, to take a look at the group of people as to um, how they, they build out, how they're functioning as a, a group within your team. And then we'll cross, we'll do cross-functional or cross-team development as well. Is that um, does that get you started or, or do we need to flush this out a little bit further? Am I not? I think, uh, I mean, I see uh, H, H has added something as well. Um, I think um, I might need it fleshed out a bit more, um, sure. maybe because I don't have the experience, but just because um, if I, I could pick pairs of people on my team who really don't work together that often at all, like, um, and if I'm trying to pick, a rating for the team as a whole it's it's kind of hard because like how am i considering that as a group um if they're not necessarily interacting with each other that closely day to day yeah, that's a really and i'm reading the the chat that hayden has said yep that might be the same for sales and um and, and that's a, an interesting dynamic um to to bring into play here i don't let me let me think about it i'll certainly open the floor for anybody who has any other thoughts or ideas this is um, under development i want to create the right exercises in the right environment the right learning environment for gitlab so um and and honestly i really didn't think of it that way i didn't think of it as as so much of um th that the individual teams don't actually work together as much as they do outside or cross-functionally uh, maybe we redesign and, and come up with a cross-functional exercise as well. Um, other thoughts or ideas on this? Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, we can make it a bit more actionable. I've been thinking about a few things while, while, we, were talking, while we were talking here. Um, so we could maybe go over, I just pasted some ideas in chat. So Shauna, like, Give, how to give good feedback, how to do a one-on-one, -on -one, how to talk about promotions, how to organize meetings, how to give performance beat, uh, feedback, bonuses, assign people to projects, collaborate with other teams, identify underperformance, actions on underperformance, reward achievements. Is, is that, would that be helpful to go more yeah. specific? 
I see some of those were mentioned um, sort of further down the chain in this yep. series. But yeah, definitely those are the sort of things I'm looking to get out of this. Absolutely. And that's why if you do look at the agenda, those are all there. Those are all topics that we're going over. I, I think, Sean, are you speaking specifically about the first assignment, the team development Develop assignment? Yeah, absolutely. So just, just for this team development assignment, um, I am finding, you know, I don't really think of my team as like, hey, let's all get together and work on something type team. Um, right. Like, it's like you go and work with this person, you go and work with this person, and then I sort of check in on you and see how things are going. And maybe they work, you know, for instance, one of my teams working quite closely with Dower at the moment because he's working on a project that's um, related to Dower's team. So um, Dower and I will sort of swap developers quite often for things like that as well. Um, so, so it's let's hard to say, is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no, this is great. This is perfect because this is, um, again, uh, we've created the, um, that's why I've created the management cohorts by experience so that people can share um, experience with, with exactly the, the things that you've put in here, Sid, are all, again, covered. And those are, are um, you know, we can certainly move those up a little bit. Um, but let me, um, maybe we redefine the, and, and it's not a definitive uh, as to your direct reports, maybe we look at this on a more holistic level. If you do not have a team of direct reports that works very tightly, so people ops, we work as a team, and, and I can probably do this exercise really well just for that, for, for that group of people. But in your case, and in, in all of engineering, and, and maybe it's better for sales, uh, maybe we look at this as at a higher level. How do you believe we as a team function? Where are we? And what can we do to continue? So this still, you can do this on any size. You could do this on the organization level. You don't have to have it on your direct reports. So I'd probably say this can be really valuable from both perspectives. Those people who work directly with their team and can actually apply the, um, uh, the a stage to your specific team do the exercise that way. If you want to look at this on a wider scale, there are certainly areas I believe, I, I don't know that, that, I do not believe that we could all say, hey, we're, we're, as GitLab, we're in the performing stage. I think we could probably be a little more realistic and say, as a team, I think we are storming and here's why. And that would be valuable. So as, uh, as long as you're, you're uh, looking at this as a group of people that makes sense, you could call that team anything, you know, any, any size group or any group of people that you wanted to define that as. The goal here is that we find out where we can make improvements and that we help you get the right resources or make the right decisions um, or, or we start programs that are specific to where our challenges are. Does that make more sense maybe? Yeah. Um... Assuming I've understood it correctly, you're saying that like I could treat this as answering for the development team as a whole, even though only a section of the development team reports to me, and then other people who also lead development teams could do the same. Um, Absolutely. Or provide our own input on how we see the development team. Um, Absolutely. If that uh, again, you know, th this is just a quick exercise. This is just one of the of the series of ten. Uh, meetings that we're going to go through. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's not the whole basis of the, of the program. It's just one piece that we wanted to start out with so that we could begin to see where teams were, were maybe having trouble getting past that forming or that storming stage. So please take a look at it from your perspective. There's no law here that says you have to do it on your direct reports. Make it make sense to you. If you want to get together as an engineering team, Feel free to do that. Take a few minutes and, and uh, go through it if you want to put your own thoughts down. And then we come back together. This is, again, going to be something that Abby and I refer to each manager. This is really for us to help you down the road. Does that yeah, make sense to everybody? That sounds great. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I was sure. going to say I had similar questions to Sean, so thanks for asking them, Sean. Uh, but I think what you're just saying, uh, John, makes a lot of sense because, for example, in the norming phase, it says begins to work to optimize team process. But in the development side of things, processes are more uh, between teams than inside the team because, as Sean said, team people inside my team don't work together all that much. Uh, so those processes more so applies to you know collaboration between back end and front end, uh, the build team, production team, etc. Uh, so yeah, I think that really helps.
Awesome. So the way I'm hearing it then, whatever teams, let's say, let's say the back and front end work, you know, uh, collaborate on things, maybe this is about that team as a whole, right? And, and if you have concerns about, um, we're, we're really tripping over something, we're not able to, to really perform at the level that we want to, that's what this is supposed to be about, finding, finding those areas of strength to share with the company and, you know, to, to help get other people past challenges, or raising a flag and saying, we're really having some challenges here. And if we don't raise the flag, we're probably going to end up with bigger problems down the road. So I'm, you know, hopefully the investment on this is, is a couple of hours um, as far as thinking through it and, and filling out those questions and, and looking at the resources that we've given you. And feel free to, to reach, I know most of you meet uh, with Abby on a biweekly basis. If you are gonna have that meeting in between, she can also guide you. And uh, if you're having challenges, um, nobody's gonna make an announcement. If, if you, know, you didn't answer a question, it's okay. Uh, you know, this is, this is really for us. It's for our development. Hey, Joan, Lee here. Just a quick question. On sure. the team development stages spreadsheet, there's the current stage where you choose and then progress. I assume that means progress within that stage on a scale yes. of one to three. Okay. Yep. Sorry, Lee. I had explained that and maybe some people uh, arrived me because it's, it's gone pretty quickly. Yes. Define the stage that you believe that team of people that you're talking about is in and what progress one to three are they in, in that particular stage? Because the stage can be pretty long. It, it can be, you know, we can get over it quickly or we can hang out there for a while. Got it. Thanks. Perfect. Yeah. Other questions, other thoughts? Abby, I wanna make sure that um, we, we check off all the boxes that, that Sid's brought up. I believe they're all in the agenda. If not, they're on our list of things to talk about. Um, but we'll make sure that we incorporate all of these things because again, the, the idea of this, this time together is that we give you valuable information give you some exercises, and we begin an interactive process across the, the, the uh, multiple experience levels that we have, and the very valuable uh, experience that many of you bring to the table. If no further questions, then uh, we'll get together the week of the, oh, nope, sorry, can't let you go yet. I said I would ask you, um, this is the best time I could find, you know, that, that uh, kind of 1230 to 130, I can do 12 to 1. Um, to, to fit the global team. We've taken 11 and 11.30 with the FGUs and the, um, and the team call. So I was trying to find the next possible decent time for the gamut that we have. Is there, I don't wanna ask you know, everybody to, to concede all the time and, and have to be you know, at their dinner hour. What else can we do? Are we okay with, uh, with approximately the 12, 1230? I'm sorry, I'm using Eastern Standard. So the, the 9, 930 PST, uh, the later afternoon, 5, 530 on the EMEA side. Are we okay running with that since it's middle of the, of the road for a little while and we can um, catch up with the recordings? I'm uh, also, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jaren, I just put in a suggestion. Uh, Time-wise, it's good. Um, for me, but for me personally, um, Tuesdays would be better because Mondays I, I do one-to-ones with my team. I think Marin's also said the same thing. Yeah. Um, Let me ask the question. I could make it a little earlier. It looks like on Fridays because Fridays we don't have the FGUs and the uh, team call. Would anybody be interested in maybe a, a little bit earlier time on a Friday? I know for some it'll be the end of your day on a Friday. And do you want to spend, you know, am I holding you up from from uh, closing out your week, talking about the exciting topics of, of management. <laughs> okay, all right, Dowell likes, really, really likes his no meetings on Fridays. <laughs> no problem. All right, well then I'm gonna go for, for well, I was, I was headed for the 10th, um, uh, but I can certainly look around I don't expect everybody to be able to make it, and that's okay. That's why we're going to record. I hope you can make it to as many as you can. Um, we'll we'll start from there, and 
Um, if we need to tweak it, we certainly can. I was going to plan like two or three out so you had them on your calendar because I know summers get really busy. Maybe, maybe like idea is because it seems that it will be hard for everyone to find a slot. So maybe this time should be rotating that uh, last week is on Tuesday, next week is, I don't know, on Thursday or the other way, just to try to that. balance. I think that's a great idea, Camille. I like that. I won't, I won't do Fridays. All right. I, I've got, I got the general consensus that nobody wants it on a Friday. I'm also, uh, that's fine by me. I just, that was the only other time I found. Okay. Well, um, let me look around. I'll take the most uh, for the, for the week of the 10th, I'll take the most available. I'll find the most available and then we'll, we'll maybe rotate from there. And again, catch up in the recordings. Please feel free to invite Abby or I to any of your cohort meetings where you want to have a few minutes of our time. Uh, feel free to create a, a cross cohort meeting. That's the, the idea is that we're putting uh, resources together. So this is kind of an open invitation uh, to, to share information. And we'll see you the week of the 10th. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, John.